The Mass Effect Legendary Edition is only a few weeks away and one of the biggest decisions that you will make when starting the series is what class to play as this will affect your overall experience with the game. This video series is designed to give you an in-depth look into each class so that you can make the most informed choice to match your preferred playstyle. In today's video we're going to take a deep dive look at the Vanguard class and everything it has to offer as well as looking at how the class evolved across the trilogy and some tips and advice on some of the best companions that pair nicely with this class. The Vanguard is a close combat specialist. Biotic warriors, they combine biotic attacks and weapons to take down opponents. Usually the first into battle, Vanguards are feared for their high risk and high reward combat style, closing quickly on enemies and destroying them at close range. Specializing in shotguns and pistols, they have access to a range of biotic abilities designed to disorientate and weaken their enemies. To complement this high risk combat style, vanguards are also able to equip medium armor and use barrier to supplement their survivability. They do have some weaknesses though, they are not well suited to long range combat and are also severely lacking in engineering, having no natural abilities to take down shielded enemies, relying heavily on teammates to pick up the slack in these areas. The Vanguard can be a tricky class to master, they require a good awareness of your surroundings, enemy positions and some degree of tactical planning, but if you like to be in the thick of the action and enjoy hit and run style combat, then the Vanguard may well be the class for you. In the original Mass Effect, the Vanguard class is a cross between a soldier and an adept. Their biotic moveset is designed to debuff and stagger enemies, while their increased armor and barrier makes them more durable than the squishy adept, and their improved weapons training allows them to use more damage dealing mid to short range weapons, like the pistol and shotgun. Pistols are a useful part of the Vanguard arsenal, compensating for the limited range of the shotgun gun and providing plenty of flexibility when taking out mid to long range targets. Spending points into this talent also unlocks the marksman's ability, which improves fire rate and accuracy as well as reducing cooldown. While the pistol does have its strengths, it is still best to spend points into the shotgun talent first as this is the signature weapon of a vanguard, dealing more damage at close range and allowing players to eliminate enemies in quick bursts killing them before they can react, thereby reducing the vanguard's exposure to enemy fire. Spending points into this talent also unlocks the Carnage ability, which when used launches an explosive burst of fire dealing massive damage and knocking enemies down. As ammo is not a factor in the original Mass Effect, players do not need to concern themselves with the reduced ammo capacity that is usually one of the main drawbacks of this weapon, so it is a good idea to spend points into the shotgun's talent tree to increase its damage, accuracy and cooldown down overall as this will be your main go-to weapon. Given the high risk nature of the Vanguard's playstyle, there are two passive talent trees available designed to make you more efficient at killing enemies quickly and more durable during these encounters. Those trees are Assault Training and Tactical Armor. Assault Training boosts your weapon and melee damage. As a close range combat specialist, melee attacks can be used frequently and are a vital tool for stunning and knocking back enemies. Putting points into this talent also unlocks the Adrenaline Burst ability, which can be used to recharge all your talents, a real lifesaver in the middle of a difficult fight. It's worth noting that only the Vanguard and Soldier class have access to this ability. Tactical Armor provides the Vanguard with higher physical damage protection, which is useful if your shields run out. It also provides your Hardening stat, which gives you increased protection from biotic attacks. This talent tree also unlocks the ability to equip medium armor and unlocks the shield boost ability which allows you to recharge your shields and barrier more quickly. While the vanguard doesn't have as high a damage protection and health as say the soldier, spending points 
into this class is essential as it can make all the difference, allowing the Vanguard to survive those few seconds longer while waiting for their abilities to cool down, and they have a wide range of biotic abilities at their disposal. These include Throw, a useful ability that flings enemies backwards, disabling them for a time and stopping them from firing on your position and making them vulnerable to weapons fire. This is a go-to move when your position becomes tenuous and you find yourself overwhelmed and surrounded by enemies. It's worth noting that Krogan have a higher body mass, so you'll need to increase the move's force and accuracy by leveling it up for the move to become effective against these enemy types. Lift is a useful disabling ability that makes small groups of enemies float into the air, removing them from the fight for a few seconds. Lifted targets are more vulnerable and take increased damage from both weapons and power attacks. They are also damaged from the fall when they eventually drop to the ground. Lift combines well with throw, pushing targets further back and even possibly out of the area. Warp is a powerful debuffing move that reduces an enemy's damage protection. It is especially useful on armor and barriers, making it easier to whittle down more powerful enemies before going in for the kill. Finally, Barrier is an essential move for a vanguard as it boosts your shields significantly, providing the protection needed to fight at close range with a shotgun. The talent can be used defensively if you find yourself in a situation where you're taking heavy fire and can't find cover or offensively if you wish to press an attack into enemy positions. As you level up your character, you can also spend points to level your vanguard class, improving your biotic resistance and boosting your damage with pistols and shotguns, allowing the class to rely more heavily on weapons and not just abilities. As you progress the game, you can also choose to specialize into one of two classes. Shock Trooper, a good choice for those vanguards who like to jump into the thick of the action and mix it up. This specialization massively improves your survivability firstly by direct bonuses to your health and damage protection and secondly through talent specialization adding constant health regeneration and a large duration bonus to your barrier. Nemesis, on the other hand, helps the vanguard to weaken enemies from range by focusing on the effectiveness of biotic talents like warp and lift, making them more effective against protected enemies. When it comes to choosing the right squad mates for the vanguard in Mass Effect 1, your primary goals will be to have teammates with basic tech talents like electronics and decryption, allowing you to unlock containers and computer stations with useful intel, weapons and mods, while also providing access to abilities like overload and damping, which are useful against shielded enemies and synthetics. Caden, Garris and Tally are good choices for this. Another consideration for the Vanguard will be the ability to deal with long range threats, as the Vanguard's weapons focus mostly on close combat. Garris is a prime choice for a squad mate as he provides solid ranged attacks and tech support. <laughs> In Mass Effect 2, the combat is much more streamlined with an increased focus on simple skill trees and quickly selectable class powers. The franchise took a very definite move away from the more RPG-based skill progression of the first game to a more action-orientated cover system and fluid combat, which is very much geared around weapons, class powers and synergies. The main difference between Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2 is that the Vanguard is now more focused on close combat and hit and run tactics, and this is supported by a whole range of new powers. The most significant introduction being the new defensive and offensive ability, Charge. It's an exclusive move only available to the Vanguard and an incredibly fun move to use. Charge moves you through cover across the battlefield rapidly into the target's face. With no protection, the enemy is sent flying. If they are protected with either shields or armor, they are staggered for a couple of seconds, allowing you to take advantage of their momentary disorientation. Charge combines well with the shotgun as the move takes you literally to point blank range, allowing you to unload all shotgun slugs into their face. In Mass Effect 2, it's also good to note that shotguns receive a double damage at close range, so it's well worth capitalizing on this. Charge also provides a four second bonus to your max 
maximum shields as well as recharging them, increasing the vanguard survivability. Charge can also be used defensively to get out of harm's way. With good power cooldown buffs, a vanguard with good situational awareness can continuously outflank a large group of enemies by dancing around them, continuously charging from one isolated enemy to the next as you gradually reduce their numbers. The move does have some weaknesses though. The enemy must be on a reachable part of the map, which rules out charging into snipers on raised platforms. The key to being an effective vanguard is knowing when to charge and when not to. An impulsive unplanned charge can lead to a short victory and sudden death if you're not careful. The vanguard should always plan their next move after charging, including their next safe option for cover. It may be a better idea to soften up enemies before using charge or thin the herd before charging in, eliminating elites and bosses before attacking the more vulnerable grunts. To help with this, the Vanguard has a plethora of new biotic moves designed to weaken and disrupt the enemy. First up is Shockwave, which creates a line of explosions in front of the Vanguard that ignores cover and height. The explosions deal damage and knock away unprotected enemies. This move is incredibly useful to the Vanguard as it can be used to provide a moment of respite before returning fire or repositioning. Pull can also be used to drag enemies out of cover and over ledges and pitfalls, making them vulnerable. Floating enemies also receive more damage from warp ammo, warp and other biotic powers, including charge. Like the soldier class, the vanguard also has access to special ammo types, allowing you to whittle down more powerful enemies protected by armor. These are now mapped to your class powers and quickly selectable from your power wheel. Incendiary ammo causes fire damage to enemies, burning through armor and setting them on fire. This stops health regeneration, which is incredibly useful against Krogan and Vorcha, and has a chance to cause some enemies to panic. It's worth noting though that synthetic enemies are resistant to fire damage. On the other hand, cryo ammo when used has a chance of freezing enemies without any special defenses for a short time, preventing them from moving. Frozen enemies are more susceptible to damage and can even be shattered for an instant kill. Finally, the Vanguard's main passive power tree is Assault Mastery. This increases your health, weapon damage, and decreases power recharge time. It also provides a bonus to Paragon and Renegade scores. At rank 4, players can specialize into Champion, which focuses on health boosts and further reduces recharge times and maximizes power duration, or Destroyer, which focuses on weapons and power damage. A final point worth noting is, as Vanguards often fight at point-blank range, the melee attack is more crucial to them than it is to the other classes. Because shotguns have a relatively low ammunition capacity, especially before being upgraded, and the Vanguard's standard biotic powers deal very low damage against protection, melee attacks prove to be a surprisingly consistent source of damage, so don't sleep on your melee attack. Mass Effect 2 massively expands the roster, giving you 13 possible squad mates, though three of these are DLC content. This is still a huge increase over Mass Effect 1's five possible companions. Squad mates' abilities in Mass Effect 2, though, are more streamlined compared to ME1, where each squad mate had eight talents. Companions in Mass Effect 2 have only two base powers and one loyalty power that unlocks after completing their loyalty mission. One of these powers can also be mapped to a shortcut prompt, usually right or left on the D-pad, allowing you to activate the ability without the need to pause the action, making combat more fluid and action focused. When it comes to choosing the best squad mates, it is good to bring allies with shield destroying abilities such as energy drain or overload. When dealing with barrier, using biotics like warp, concussive shot and reeve are useful, and when dealing with armored opponents, incinerate and warp are 
are good to have too. Ivangar's best friend is an ability that prevents an enemy from firing at him or her when they're face to face. Some good examples include Zayid for his disruptor ammo against synthetics, sniper rifle for long range and inferno grenade, Garrus for his overload, sniper and assault rifles for medium to long range fire support and armor piercing ammo for extra damage, or Miranda simply for her ability to strip protection layers and buff the squad. Morden can also use Incinerate to help deal with armored enemies, and enemies frozen with Cryoblast shatter instantly when charged into, allowing the Vanguard to immediately eliminate an enemy. Samara is also a good choice, since a squad of enemies being targeted by Reeve are all sitting ducks that can't fire back, and her pull and throw can be used to eliminate unchargeable enemies. So Mass Effect 2 definitely gives you plenty of choices and plenty to work with depending on your preferred playstyle. Mass Effect 3 takes the combat from Mass Effect 2 and uses the same powers and cover base system but with some tweaks. Firstly, the game introduced a new weight capacity system which affects players' power recharge times. While a solid weapon helps, one of the better ideas for a vanguard is to keep recharge times low. Much of a vanguard's success is contingent upon the ability to use powers in rapid succession, stringing various moves together to produce devastating effects. Try to equip as few weapons as possible and apply lightweight mods to keep the power recharge bonus as high as you can. You can also increase your carrying capacity in the assault mastery tree along with weapon damage, power force and reputation, so it's worth specking into this. A new passive talent called Fitness is also introduced in Mass Effect 3, which increases a Vanguard's health, barriers and melee damage. This increased survivability is especially important for Vanguards, as the extra barriers and health will often give them that few seconds more needed to survive until their next biotic charge is available, should the player find themselves in a dangerous situation. The shields and health bonuses also help to minimize power loss on Nova. Vanguards will likely find themselves relying on the new, more powerful melee attack to conserve ammo. In terms of active powers, the Vanguard has the same powers as in Mass Effect 2. Pull, Shockwave, Biotic Charge, Cryo and Incendiary Ammo are back and work the same, but the Vanguard now has access to the new edition of Nova. Nova acts as the Vanguard's replacement for traditional grenades. It utilizes the Vanguard's high-risk, high-reward combat style, briefly turning the player into a living bomb. It's a close-range shockwave power. Activating Nova will detonate and expend the Vanguard's remaining biotic barrier, causing damage and knocking back enemies within its radius. The amount of damage and force is derived from the amount of the remaining barrier. When used at full barrier, Nova becomes a devastating attack, capable of killing most enemies outright. Its widespread damage is further augmented by its ability to detonate all types of power combos. Considering that Biotic Charge restores barriers and Nova expends them, both moves work well in tandem together. As such, Nova is a brilliant way to finish a Biotic Charge. The reverse is also true. Nova can be used to stun enemies and followed up by a Biotic Charge, which replenishes your shields. This takes the risk out of Nova, as it leaves the player vulnerable after use, since it expends all the Vanguard's barriers. The biggest game changer for the Vanguard though was the introduction of power combos. These require two different powers to activate, a primer and a detonator. Primers determine which of the four types of power combos will be primed, and once detonated cause a massive explosion and increased damage. The four types of power combos available are fire, cryo, tech and biotic. Biotic explosions do two times normal damage against barriers and armor. Enemies killed by cryo explosions shatter without leaving a corpse, and enemies caught in the blast radius but not killed or frozen can be chilled and have their movement speed slowed by 30%. Tech bursts create a blast of electricity that inflicts severe damage on the shields and health of nearby enemies and have a chance to stun them. 
Tech Burst also do two times normal damage against shields. And finally, Fire Explosions create a blast of flames that inflicts damage against the armor and health of enemies. Fire Explosions also do two times normal damage against armor. I won't go into too much detail on the different combinations possible here as they are numerous, but I will flash up a couple here on screen for you to see. One of the most powerful tools to a vanguard is the Biotic Explosion. Pull acts as a Biotic Primer and combining this with the three detonators that the vanguard has at their disposal, Shockwave, Nova and Biotic Charge, will cause a Biotic Explosion, dealing massive damage to the target and other enemies caught in the blast radius. Pull is also an incredibly useful move to use against enemies wielding handheld shields like guardians, making them more vulnerable to attacks, so it is recommended to put at least one point in pull. The extremely short recharge time of pull, factored with the quick recharge time of charge, make this an extremely powerful and popular combo. But if you don't want to dive into the thick of the action straight away, Shockwave gives the Vanguard a power that can detonate all all types of power combos from a safe distance. Incendiary ammo can also prime a target for a fire explosion, which can be detonated by most of the vanguards or the powers. Since vanguards typically use shotguns, the explosive burst evolution is particularly useful as a single shot will produce four explosions with the potential for as many as eight, dealing massive chained damage. Cryo ammo is most effective when applied to a fast firing SMG. The main benefit of cryo, apart from its slowing capability, is if an enemy is completely frozen, a biotic charge used in a follow up will shatter the enemy instantly, killing them regardless of health. It's worth noting that the power of biotic combos depends on the rank of the powers used, so using two rank 6 powers will do more damage. Each class power can be leveled up to rank 6 and the third game in the trilogy takes a turn towards more RPG based skill progression as after rank 3 each subsequent rank has two possible branches allowing players to customize Commander Shepard to their preferred playstyle. While the Vanguard is more than capable of creating their own biotic fire and cryo explosions it's still a good idea to bring two squad mates with you that also give you plenty of useful options in terms of primers and detonators and you have plenty to choose from as Mass Effect 3 gives you 7 regular and 11 temporary squad mates as part of the story. Each have 4 active and 1 passive power, so there are plenty of options for vanguards when choosing members for your squad. Because of the changes to the biotic explosions mechanic in Mass Effect 3, the Vanguard can benefit greatly from using two biotic squad mates with the setup powers Reeve, Warp or Dark Channel, because these powers can adhere to targets through armor, shields and barriers, they can produce biotic detonations on many targets. Biotic squad mates such as Caden, Liara and Javik synergize well with Vanguards because of their ability to set up biotic detonations. Liara's singularity is unparalleled as setting up large numbers for unprotected enemies close to each other, making them an easy target for charge. Her warp can adhere to targets through protections, and if you upgrade stasis to bubble, this can also be used in the same way as singularity. Caden's Reeve move will also adhere to a target through protections and soften them up for charge. Reeve can also be upgraded to affect multiple targets, allowing for multiple detonations when combined with Nova. Caden also possesses the useful overload power, allowing him to strip shields from enemies and set up tech bursts or detonate tech explosions when he isn't helping with biotic explosions, filling in for one of the Vanguard's biggest weaknesses. And Javik's dark channel power is also extremely useful as it will leap to the closest enemy when its current target dies, allowing the Vanguard to use it for consecutive detonations on enemies. A good rhythm in combat is to use the first squad mate's setup power followed by charging the target to detonate, then use the second squad mate's setup power followed by Nova to produce a second detonation. By this time, the cooldowns for the first setup power and biotic charge should be over and the process can be repeated. Utilizing a lightweight weapon loadout keeps the cooldown on charge and Nova extremely short, allowing for an extremely aggressive playstyle. 
So there you have it, there is everything that you need to know about the Vanguard class before jumping into the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Let me know what you think of the Vanguard and if you have any questions about the class feel free to post those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, remember to show your support by liking, commenting, sharing and subscribing. I'll be back again with my next video in this series which will focus on the engineer. So look forward to that. Have a great week guys and girls and as always, happy gaming. I should go. Thank you.